Perfect competition and monopoly are useful tools to get a sense of how competitive a market might be and how closely the, uh, the costs of, a, <clears throat> of, a, of production are mirrored in the price. But in many instances, it isn't just one firm and it's not many firms. Sometimes there are uh, cases where there may be relatively few firms, even a duopoly. And I want to uh, formalize some of the concepts of uh, duopoly in this, uh, in this first of, uh, of two videos, where we're going to be looking at the strategic interaction between two firms in a duopoly. So when, when you have a duopoly, you know, when I make a decision, it's going to affect the other guy and, and vice versa. There's this, you know, we, we don't ignore what the other what the other firm might uh, might do, and it this is a tricky thing to to analyze because my behavior depends on your behavior, and the concept that we're going to be using to start with is so-called Corno Nash. I want to emphasize the Nash just a, a moment here. Some of you may have seen the movie uh, A Beautiful Mind uh, about John Nash. John Nash was the was the person who figured out how to deal with this complicated issue of strategic interaction among small groups of, uh, of people. And in, and in our case, it's going to be in, uh, in the case of, uh, of two firms. And uh, it's very elegant uh, and, and, and amazing in its sim uh, in simplicity. And there's a reason why the guy won a Nobel Prize for this. It's really, uh, it's really quite... Uh, uh, quite an extraordinary idea, but let's uh, let's talk about this in a particular context. Again, we'll do this first with Corneau, and Corneau behavior is one in which firms decide how much to produce, and then they let the prices adjust in the marketplace. A firm can't choose both price and quantity. You know, we saw this uh, with, for example, the monopoly. You could. You know, you could choose the output, but then you've got to deal with the demand of consumers in terms of the price. So in this case, we're going to let firms make a decision about how much they produce and um, the quantity they produce and, and let prices adjust. And we're going to do this in the context of identical goods. You have two, two firms, they operate in the market. They both produce exactly the same thing, and they know that the other guy exists, and they know that there, there may be some uh, uh, reactions to what I do by the other firm. We're going to do this in what's called a non-cooperative outcome. So we're not going to have a, uh, a situation where these two firms collude with each other and try and, uh, and uh, take it out on the consumers. Instead, they are, they're, they're rivals. They, they are trying to do the best they can. Uh, with uh, their own uh, profits. So one of the concepts that we're going to see here is a so-called reaction function. That's when I make my decision based on what I think that you're going to do. This is very explicitly about the strategic interaction. And we're going to have two firms, uh, and this, this, say, is firm one. We're going to call it Y. And we're going to call the other firm's output Y star. These are identical goods. Consumers wouldn't know one from the other. And without going into the details of the, react, the derivation of the reaction function, but although I can say just on the side, it comes from the profit maximizing decision of a firm taking into account the, uh, the reactions of the other firm, and in, in particular, uh, taking the other firm's action as given, uh, which is again the Corno Nash story. But we're going to imagine that the decision of good of, of firm one to produce a good is going to depend on their reaction to the other firm's uh, output. They're going to have a range of possible choices of their own output 
given what the other guy does. And I want to depict this in uh, the following in the following way, where I'm going to have firm two's output on this axis, and I'm going to have firm one's production on this axis. Now I'm going to I'm going to allergy to something. This is kind of uh, look like a um, a production possibility frontier, which you are going to see in this course as well. It's not, you know, this is a reaction function of one firm to another. And let me just draw this, and I'll describe it in just a moment. Okay, so again, this is firm one's reaction to different levels of, of output by the other firm. And we can, um, let's, let's think about this, this point right here. This is firm one's reaction when firm two doesn't produce anything. This is the monopoly level of profit, that's the quantity associated with the monopoly level of profits for firm one. The more the other firm produces, the lower the profits are going to be for this firm. Now you can show, I'm going to just uh, do this uh, for now, that you can look at the profits of firm one, an ISO profit function, where I get the highest possible profits given foreign firm, the foreign firm's behavior, and there's going to be a combination of, um, of profits associated with firm two's reaction. So as you move down, you're getting a lower level of profits associated with firm one. Okay? And that again comes from the, the first order conditions, the profit maximizing decision of the, uh, of the, uh, a firm one. Okay. Now, let me take some of these out because we're not going to actually use those at the moment. I'll talk about them a little bit later. Now, I've also got a reaction function for the other guy. He's also thinking about what his rival is doing. And that reaction function is going to look like the, the following, and I'll describe this in just a second. This is firm two's reaction to the decisions of firm one. Now, uh, not surprisingly, uh, oh, and I should say that this would be the profit, uh, the monopoly profits, the, the output associated with monopoly profits for firm two. That's when firm one doesn't produce anything. Not surprisingly, economists are going to be uh, focused on the intersection of these two curves. Now let's talk about what that means. This is the combination of output for the two firms such that what I think he's going to do matches what he does and what he thinks I'm going to do matches what I do. If firm two chooses this level of output, what do we do to find, to find out what uh, firm one's reaction is? We go up to the blue line. You can say, okay, that's what firm one will do. And if firm one does this, you go back over to the blue line, you go down, they are mutually consistent. That's the Nash equilibrium. 
Given what he does, I'm optimizing. Given what I do, he's optimizing. Now, I'd like to talk briefly about ways that you, if you weren't at that combination, what happens? For example, let's say that firm one chooses this level of output. Okay, so then what we do is that we go up to firm one's reaction to that. You go up here. There's firm one's reaction. You then say, okay, given that, what is the other firm's reaction? You go back to the indifference curve or the um, the reaction function. Firm one, uh, two reacts by producing more. And so what you have is this movement towards the equilibrium. If you get off, it's a stable equilibrium. If they, if they have, uh, choose any combination of output that's not this optimal level, there's a tendency for them to converge back to that optimal level. So this is a, a stable, non-cooperative equilibrium. This is when we take the other firm's choice as given and where both firms make the decision at the same time. That's the Corno-Nash outcome. Now what I'd like to talk about is what's known as Stackelberg. Stackelberg means I get to choose first. I get to be the, um, the first mover in this relationship. So we will draw this same combination. Okay, so this is the same depiction we had before. Let's allow firm one to move first. They can choose whichever level of output they'd like. And then the other firm reacts to their decision. Now, what you would see and again, I, I, don't, I don't want to go into the, the mathematics of this, but what you would see is that if you looked at an ISO profit surface, okay, this is the set of, of combinations that give the same level of output, if you found a level of, of output such that the Uh, firm one's pro isoprofit surface was tangent to the foreign firm's reaction function, that's the best outcome for them. So what you see here is that if, if firm one chooses this level of output, then you go over to the uh, firm two's reaction function, you go down, that's their decision, and then you go up, and then the, foreign, uh, the firm one has no incentive to change. So if you have first mover advantage in this setup, you can do um, better than if you have both firms moving at the same time. Now, it's still not as, uh, as good as the, that monopoly uh, level of output, but if you've got this other rival that's going to be there, this is the best that you can do. So we've talked about 
Corno Nash non-cooperative outcome, where, where both firms move at the same time, and also the Corno Stackelberg uh, outcome, where one of the firms gets to move first and, and really kind of take the high ground, if you will. Now, in another video, we're going to talk about a different um, behavioral assumption that instead of having firms uh, base their uh, first make the decision about how much to produce and let prices adjust. Instead, we can allow firms to adjust, uh, to choose their prices and let quantities adjust. And we're going to see that the, uh, those outcomes are, are uh, really quite distinct and uh, important to, to understand both of those.